Welcome back to Off Planet Radio, and tonight you just <laughs> get uh, Randy and I, I don't know whating. No, it's, it's a completely bizarre mood. I mean, we've both talked each other out of a, a show, and yet <laughs> somehow we talked each other back into it, and we sort of determined already that it's over, but it's not over <laughs> until it's over. So we're going to call this the over show. It'll be an overdrive. And you'll be overjoyed to hear some of the things we talk about, but mostly we're just kind of over all that. So, well, maybe we should just go with that then. Like, I, I, maybe, and maybe every, maybe, actually, I would like to hear back from people in the comment section, preferably on Facebook, because the one on YouTube is just a cesspool, cesspool most of the time. <laughs> there are there are some nice people and some and even and, and and some people whose constructions criticisms are constructive, but there's also the, all the other stuff that is just like well, whatever. But um. I'm I'm struggling a little bit here like I like you know like I kind of um I, I, Randy, like I'm just I feel over it with a lot of stuff like I'm just frustrated with everything and everything feels sort of stuck and stale and I go back and forth between feeling that way or feeling like uh in overdrive in terms of the amount of um memories strange physical sensations crazy dreams weird stuff going on um it, most of that stuff being like fairly internal like i have almost been paying no attention to what's going on like out in the outside world the last couple of weeks because I, I think no I attention not. actually none almost yeah. none. <laughs> almost. long enough to notice that things still yeah. stuck and everybody's blaming somebody else yeah so yeah and so i've seen yeah, so I've been paying more attention to like the internal process, which when it is kind yep. of crazy, and I, I, there's a weird part of me that even enjoys that overwhelmed with emotions, overwhelmed with uh, dreams and memories kind of stuff, because that gives me something to sort of work on and figure out, and I enjoy that process. Um, and then, but this kind of, some days when I'm just feeling stuck and frustrated and, and not sort of knowing where I want to go with things, um, and the other thing that's been happening, and I've talked to a few people about this, but I would like to hear um, from others if they're feeling this way. Like, I'm almost not, like, I'm having trouble listening to YouTube videos or listening to any kind of information. Like, I don't, like, my YouTube feed is, I don't know if it's just boring or if it makes me want to throw up or whatever. Like, I just, I can't seem to get through more than two or three minutes of any video or any information. And I'm starting to even, like, there's nothing that's not too much interesting stuff being posted all the stuff that is being posted no it's over the whole it's over the like I, I, I can't is over. i can't stand i this. said this i said this yesterday on on facebook and a couple of posts and i've been saying it in different ways yeah this alternative media thing is over it's, it's uh, yeah it's, it I, that's going like to get overused fast but really it is the the through the few legitimate people out there that are I think doing good work and also represent good values. Yeah. Um, standards. There's they're few and far between. And what you have now is you have basically everybody's decided the way this is all going to go. So everybody has a format now and they're mining the format and you know, they're, it just feels stale. And it, that's, that's exactly what I know, said. And it was pointed out to me that the reason it feels that way is because I've done this for so long. And on one level, that's probably true. But I also think we're kind of in this, first off, as we're recording this, and I'm not an astrologer, Robert Phoenix was on a few weeks ago, you can ask him. It's Venus in retrograde yeah. right now. And <clears throat> it's been extremely strange the last moon cycle, we're recording this tonight on the full moon, which is a, I believe, a planner's moon. 
uh, or a, yeah, a new moon. So we're in the beginning of a, a moon cycle. There's just, I've lived long enough that I've seen how this goes. There are seasons where you just go through not giving a fuck. And it's the season of not giving a fuck. And you I guess have to it's allow that to happen. I guess this is kind of a new thing for me. Like, I, there's never been a time when I, like, there's times where, like, about certain things I didn't give a fuck or whatever, but I've never been this disinterested in research information, like, listening to things. Like, I just, I, there's a part of me that feels like this means we're, I, like, we need to start taking things in another direction. Like, I feel like the, the way, like, the looking and the, the needing more information phase is we over. We have researched ourselves to, to death. death. Like, and, and, and there are no proof for the proofs of the theorems. Of I don't want any proof. For, for I all just the want evidence to... that was compiled and data mined from the cloud before it was the cloud. And everybody just wants more. And I don't consequently, want... that result is like gluttony. It's informational gluttony. Yeah, I, I feel like I don't want any more. Like, I feel like it's just time no. to start doing cool shit. And for some reason, if nothing else out of habit is why I keep going back to my YouTube feed, why I keep, like, I don't want it. Like, I even say to myself, like, why am I doing this when I'm doing it? But we've become so, like, conditioned uh, to receive uh, copious amounts of information. And now all the information that I'm hearing, like, with very few exceptions, is compl it, most of it is just really old stuff. And just stuff that I don't even care, and, that, and a lot of stuff I don't even care about. Like I don't care at all about politics anymore. Like I don't care. I don't. I, I don't care. And like I don't. Like, I want to. I, I. I guess I really. What I really want to do is find a way for us to, like, build upon the base that you did such a good cre job creating of of open minded inquiry into these kinds of like topics that other people have the research or that there's been a lot of information about you've you know always done it in such a more creative and expansive kind of way and then i've been doing that with you for the last year now but like i feel like let's let's like make something totally different and and and, and let's make it with other people people who've been part of our group and who've been you know listening to the show and following the show for years or even the new people but like let's do something like let's just come up with something different and like like and and let's like I feel like well, just like we like we have to leave the old paradigm the old world behind I think that includes to a certain extent all the old looking for information waiting to hear information shit like not that we should forget what we've learned or not ever pay attention to anything but I think that like we've we've in, like I don't I, I think we already know everything we need to know I don't, I don't mean that it means we know everything, but like we have enough information now that we should be able to um, use that towards creating what we want as an alternative to what we've had. And if it's not, then there's maybe even something wrong with what we've been looking at. The information that wants to come out now is internally generated. And I'm hearing yeah. this from more than one person. I had a long Facebook chat last night with um, somebody, the listeners of the show might remember from a while back, Temporal Recon, who does the John Titor book. I love, I, lo I want to I wanna have him back. It's one of my favorite shows. Well, he won't do radio interviews anymore. He, he doesn't, he's not comfortable with the medium. Oh, so, it's so good. We, it was such a good show. But we were talking about this very thing. And he's stoked because he's got new data, new information, and he's putting together, he's, the, the book's going to expand almost a thousand pages with the new research that he's done. He's going to put out a new edition of it. And he's excited about what he's learned. Some of it is research, but a lot of it now is just as a result of being inside of this. He basically walked into a world that was, was, created by this John Titor time traveler thing on the internet in 2000. And as a result of that, by doing the research, writing the book and going further with it, he now realizes the scope of this whole time travel thing. Yeah. And how huge it is. Yeah. Now we're sitting here in 2017 
And the, the planet's literally crawling with people from what we call the future and, and maybe even yeah. what we call the past. See, now that's cool shit. And that's not like this hard factual arguing back and forth about the um, theory of quantum mechanics and all this other no. stuff. Although that's no. part of it. That's part of it. Sure. But see, now it's application. Now we can take this stuff that was dropped in our lap in the 20th century and we can start to push it forward in the, probably the 26th century. But forget all that for a minute because we're still being linear. Right. Like, I, I don't, I, I mean, I'll just go out there and say it. I think I'm from the future. I think you probably are too. Somehow we're here. Maybe we should start trying to talk about, or, you know, uh, what we're doing here. And, um, well, no, we're here to, we're here, we're here to deal with time. That's why we, yeah, that, yeah that, 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 that's why that. I, I've gone back and looked at my own journals that I've written since I was a kid. And that is the dominant theme of theme. everything. Yeah, that's and what I feel. The thing is, everything I knew at like 14 and 15, now I just have a more confident base for what I believed then. I, I haven't changed my mind or my opinion about much of anything. Yeah, I me mean, either. Same thing for me. Like, if I think back, all of my, like, all of my strange fantasies, thoughts, ideas, weird, like, experiences, all really were dominated by this concept of time being funky and time not being what we think it is and, and um, different ways of moving through time and different ways of organizing time. And so, you know, I think maybe, maybe that's what this is. Is like maybe after all of this information and research that all of us have taken in, looked at and done, we need to decide what we are, like what, what our place in this is and, start, you know, like what we're supposed to be doing and just do that. Stop worrying about all the other shit. Well, I mean, just because of the fact that we occupy this zone on the internet doesn't mean we're hardwired into anybody's paradigm right now, which is kind of why we're doing this. We kind of broke with the whole interview thing to just sit down and have conversations with people yeah. and to set a table for some ideas to come out. And to interact with interesting people like we do with Robert and Og and Sean Gatro and other people. Because there's people out there who are at different stages of discovery. And it's all converging anyway. I, I'm able now to go three degrees on the clock at any point and pull another point in and connect it to something over here. Because that's, that's where we're at right now. And, and I think part of where we're at right now is that we have been swept up on the beach of this election thing, which has so that. much energy. It had so much yeah. energy, negative energy beached somewhere. The tide's gone out. Everybody's sitting around going, well, gosh, I hope Trump's going to keep his promises. That was a lot better when Obama was president. Oh <laughs> shit. I hate liberals conservatives i mean really if you're talking about this uh, pardon me for a minute if you want to talk about the politics mm -hmm. there's lots of places out there to do it but i'm really like nauseous over the whole thing now yeah like, it, it, that's a, yeah sorry they have just sucked the air out of every room and all yeah. they can do is spew their opinions and their bigotry and their hatred. And it's, this is liberals, conservatives, Republicans, Democrats. I don't really give a crap. All the people well, inside the political big tent are a bunch of knuckle-dragging morons who, quite frankly, deserve to scrape up the elephant shit, shit after the circus. <laughs> no, ab absolutely. And the other thing is, I think that it's, like, super annoying is that, like, even within this political thing that's bullshit, like, the dominant crap that stuff that keeps getting talked about is this thing that isn't even real, like this whole fucking Russian fairy tale, right? Like we're still on that. We're, they're still like having hearings about that with no, where they don't show any evidence. And like people like still think that that's a thing. You know, it's not a thing. You know what I mean? Like our government interferes in every other election around the world. I'm sure other governments do the same thing. End of story. Right? Like, <laughs> the, people like, are, the only people that are buying this narrative are the American people. Everybody else right. already knows this was a smokescreen. I mean, the Russians have been our bogeyman 
for 70 years. It was like World War II was over and they went, oh, that, okay, well, we need new enemies here. Let's see, Red China, Russia will work real well. They've always been kind of dark anyway. And so no matter how much Russia, Soviet Union reformed itself, they have never been able to really break the Iron Curtain. And they're a nemesis. They're basically a designated nemesis, just like Islamo-terrorism right. is the nemesis for the age since 2001. Because yeah. they're all invented enemies. You know, the yeah. people wetting themselves on Facebook over Muslims. <laughs> Again, please. <Yeah. laughs> <clears throat> so far, I've not seen any incidents of Muslim terror on American soil. What I've seen is a bunch of people who were put out there while uh, the boys at Langley gaslighted <laughs> the entire nation with their annex. It's not a real... Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. Like the whole, you know, like, it's not... Uh, so my friend Danny, who will be joining us on uh, for a show at some point in the near future, she's very, very busy on the project right now, but she put out and she puts out lots of stuff that starts interesting conversation on her Facebook site. If you guys, um, I've been posting a lot of her stuff, but my friend Danny Katz, D-A-N-I-K-A-T-Z, um, she posts the little cartoons that she makes that are so cute, but that really pose, or you know, important questions or leave quotes that, that can sometimes stimulate good conversation. And the other day she posted one that said, what if nothing is wrong? And, um, like, I've, I've been feeling that a lot, too, like, lately. Like, you know, I mean, I've been feeling it always. As soon as I kind of became aware a long, long time ago that, like, most of our problems are to this sort of made-up problems and problem-reaction solution and then moving into sillier and sillier territory with hoaxes and stage stuff or whatever, that, like, really, like, the only problems we have are these ones that we sort of create ourselves, and most of those are based on things that are made up by somebody else. So what if nothing is wrong? And maybe that's where what we have to, like, maybe this, everything, there always being something wrong is what compels us and drives us to seek information, to do all this research. Maybe we need to start acting from a place of what if nothing is wrong. When she said that, it reminded me of um, Jose Arguez. Remember Jose Arguez, Randy? And he, I just remember this one interview of him talking about everything is per like in the harmony it should be and everything is exactly how as it should be and that doesn't mean that everything is like perfect and yay i think what he means is that like everything is exactly where it needs to be for us to do whatever work we need to do to become who we want to be or to move ourselves forward like it's the answer just like everything else we say is not going to come from outside of ourselves there is not some big problem on the outside that we need to fix you, see, you know i mean it, you can be happy for five minutes and then you're bored with happy and you're like i'm yes. so fucking happy i could puke right now so then you go off and you're miserable for a while and then you're miserable with being miserable but you're not happy with being happy so then you decide you're just going to be bored and then you bore yourself with boredom but we live <laughs> in a dynamic universe yes. that relies on things clashing with each other, black and white, dark and light, the whole you know, yeah. spectrum of things that we go through. And it's a matrix array because then on top of all that, we have all these cycles, lunar cycles, solar that cycles. That was going to be my next thing. Menstrual day, yeah. cycles, yeah. Males, as, you know, males, cycles guys admit it new cycles tricycle whole, you know we're, we're recycling all the time yeah so all these energies collide and they collide in interesting and different ways because what we really want is we just don't want to look at the same goddamn thing all the time and even if it bores you for a while you know in 10 minutes it's going to change right and so it's like friction and 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 inertia and all of these forces colliding and clanging around, that's what we came here for. That's the party. Yeah. You yeah. know, so things, so there is nothing wrong. It is exactly as it should be. We came here, we divine, divine spirits entered bodies in whatever the fuck this is to create the experience for ourselves that will allow us to expand and grow and become what we want to be next. So it made me think of Jose Arguez. And then when I said that to Danny, she was like, ooh, she's like, she brought up the whole 13, the moon 
uh, thing that he came up with. I like I wasn't thinking about it in terms of that. I was just thinking of him sitting there with Terrence McKenna saying that stuff. Um, and then I so I remembered about the thirteen moon hole thing, and that's the whole idea that like the reason that we have such chaos is because we have these months that are different lengths, and so they were. He kind of was part of. I don't know if it was just him or uh, part of a group of people that like came up with this idea of having a, like a 13 month thing where all the months were 28 days and that, that would help us to like, that would kind of adjust our frequency and make things more harmonious because it is kind of weird if you think well, about some it. Some people have- who listen to me long enough remember when we put out a calendar back in 2004 mm-hmm. that had 28 day months. See, there you go. Based on a lunar cycle. And right. then there were, it was a marvelous calendar. It was unobservable because what we determined is this was actually based on Hebrew calendar. What we determined was no Sabbath. The Sabbaths no longer fell on predictable days like Saturday. That's convenient. If you're closed every Saturday, like when I lived in New York, you know, West, you would go up to the Diamond District, but you had to go there on Sunday on a weekend because they were closed on Saturdays because that was Shabbat. So. Right like your Sabbaths would start falling in really inconvenient times. And like Sabbath's very specific because it's, right. it's right there at sun sunset. Right. And so you all of a sudden have this own thing. It's like, now you've got to block out your days because it's going to be Wednesday and then it's going to be a Monday here and it's not convenient. And the it's whole, not, it, and the it, whole it's point not, of it was the only reason it's not convenient is because we're living in a clockwork universe. We've configured ourselves into an artificial time set dictated by cycles. They have to be predictable because we live in a society of consumption and production. We need to be predictable. And see, anything that's unpredictable is anathema to the system. So how do you break the system? You start breaking it by breaking down the predictability of their own structures which right. is all based on time and motion. Right. And th- if you think about it, like that because we are completely ruled by time and then we have this calendar that like doesn't make any natural rhythmic sense, but is how we operate time. So from the beginning, this level of chaos and disharmony is built into that. You know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So, so I was thinking about that. So that, so I went and I was looking up the 13 moon thing and I found this, like, they, like, on the whatever website I was looking at. Oh, so I know. In Danny's comment, she also said to me, I was really into that for a while. I'm a lunar skywalker. What are you? I wasn't sure what she was talking about. So associated with this 13 moon things, there's, like, this sort of like cosmic or galactic kind of code thing. And you enter your birthday. It's sort of, like, similar to astrology, but a little different. Like, it tells you sort of your, your, your galactic tone and your tribe. And I'm a blue galactic hand or a galactic blue hand or whatever. And it was very interesting what it said like that. It doesn't, it's not like astrology where it tells you like, um, gives you like some kind of horoscope and that kind of thing. It's more like it sort of tells you like what your, um, like what your purpose sort of is here. It was, I, I really liked it. Uh, I, I thought it was really interesting. So for, for shifts and giggles or just to look into something a little different than what we hear about with astrology in our regular calendar, um, people should check out that 13 moons calendar and the galactic um, code or the cosmic code that goes with it based on your birthday for that. You should do that sometime, Randy. It was interesting. Um, but uh, that idea of what if nothing is wrong, maybe like that's the whole, like maybe that's the biggest trap we're in is this idea that something is wrong and we can't do what we want to do until it gets fixed. Where maybe what we need to do is start operating with is this, you know, there's nothing wrong. If anything, the only thing is wrong is that we think something is wrong and so we're not doing what we want to do. And just start operating from this place of, you know, of that, from that place. Of, uh, you know, like really give ourselves the freedom and permission to become the reality generator the, the or generating the 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 world whatever the, cre- the generating what we want regardless of if everything is perfect or not you know like cuz you know like that that um maybe that was bad words there like 
that maybe things are perfectly as they should be. And maybe there isn't, maybe if everything was not fucked up, there wouldn't be any, like, it, it would be over. And so maybe every, everything is exactly as, as it should be. And that goes along with the, it's over. So <laughs> our theme for the show well, is I mean, being it's over. not perfect. And there are some things that are quote wrong. There's some stuff we got to fix. And there are some very evil entities walking around on this world. Sure. I mean, I mean this in like a double kind of way. Obviously, right, right. No, obviously, it's not a utopia, and it never will be. Right, but but like the, the things that we see are wrong. Maybe they're exactly the sort of um, things that we somehow, since we're the divine creators, put there in order to challenge ourselves to create something better. You know what I mean? So maybe instead of trying to fix this, let's start making something else, and then you know. This, this won't have such a power over us. And instead of, of trying to dismantle and re, reconstruct this, we just make something new and then people we, you know, can, as they choose to, move over to what the, whatever we've created that's new and that is what we want as opposed to trying to fix something, fix some broken thing that somebody else made, did, and is controlling. Yeah, I, did, there, I mean, look, there are things wrong, and there are things that, as a culture, again, we live in a construct that is mutually agreed upon. There are certain ground rules to it. And a lot of that's a shadow dance that goes on between the good and evil stuff. And we all shift back and forth into these roles. But there's an inhuman level, and I... I need to say this because we're going to get there anyway. One of the things that's bothering me right now is how the whole pedo gate, and I'm not calling it pizza gate. I'm calling it pedo gate mm -hmm. because it's much bigger than Podesta and Hillary Clinton and Comet ping pong pizza and the whole Washington DC March that just happened over this last weekend. This whole thing is one of the things that we need as a society right now to drag out into the open and finally start to deal with it. And I know you've kind of been going through some emotional things as regards Pedogate and specifically the gymnasts that have been coming out en masse that have been molested. We still have this unfolding Penn State thing here in my state. Um, which, I, which the gymnastics thing is related to in some ways. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all of this is coming out now for a reason. This is the great purge because you can't move forward. Okay, so we're in this bubble. We've all agreed on certain rules, and one of the rules is we don't screw our children. We don't put them through satanic ritual abuse. We don't put them into projects and mind control them and try to turn them into fricking sex slaves and, 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 right. uh, you know, walking time, time travelers and this and that. And right, time, right. Well, time travel is fine under the right conditions, but not, right. not, not, not without the people's consent and, 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 and knowledge not of what's Montauk happening. Style, no. Not Montauk style. No, yeah. so this is coming out because it's taken this long for the civilization at large to be mature enough to deal with this. In some way we've known it. Look, the microcosm here in Penn State land is, and I've said this before, the FBI knew 20 years ago what was going on at Penn State, not just Jerry Sandusky, not just Penn State, but the sex trafficking that, tra trafficking that was going on across state lines with a nexus point between Penn State and the state capital, which is Harrisburg in Pennsylvania. It was 20 years ago they knew about this. This is a much larger operation because it is literally an underground railroad. It's a traffic. It's a tra it's a, it's a, tra it's a trafficking operation. Yeah. And it's connected to mind control projects. It's connected to government operations. It's conducted to scandals in really high places that have cost real people their lives. Yeah. So the culture has to deal with this now because if you don't deal with it, we can't go any further forward collectively. I do. I mean, I do agree about that. And I, but by saying what I was saying before doesn't mean no, I, no. And then yeah. that was not. That was just simply the kind of transition to the other side of this. Like I think maybe this is the issue where we, 
like this is the time where we we start what how we so okay i'm sorry i'm losing my train of thought a little bit here and um, what randy's referring to i'm going to talk about it a little bit here just in case there isn't another opportunity to um i there's a there's a huge scandal going on with usa gymnastics it started to really come well the first little drippings of things came out a few several years back but then really last year just before the olympics in which got swept under the rug because of the excitement of the olympics it began to come out that there was all of these gymnasts ranging from just average gymnasts all the way up to members of each and every you know uh national team and olympic team who are claiming to have been um or who have been sexually abused or molested, some by particular coaches, but mainly the complaints have been against a particular doctor who's a national team doctor, his name's Larry Nasser. And so these gymnasts have come out, there, have been, there, are, there are lawsuits that are numbering in the hundreds right now. Most of the lawsuits name Larry Nasser, USA Gymnastics, and some, some coaches, some other coaches, there was a separate case that involved coaches, other coaches, you know, in, in Indianapolis and a few other places, you know, molesting gy gymnasts in their own gym. But th this main case involves this guy, Larry Nasser, and then it's also suing coaches, including John Getter, coach of 2012 Olympian, Jordan Weber, and uh, Bella and Marcia Caroli, the world famous um, gymnastics coaches who have been running. Marcia Caroli has been the coordinator of the national team for just for the last 15 years, and her husband was before that you know, famous coaches, they've coached many Olympians, many Olympic champions, including Nadia Komenich, Mary Loretton, Gary Strug, you know, Kim's Meskel, Dominique Mojano, all these kinds of people. Um, and they're being charged with them, them as well as USA Gymnastics are being charged with creating an environment that allowed this to happen. And um, I agree about that 100%. I also, to me- so Is that actually uh, a charge creating, is that like creating a hostile environment? Like, like basically that they they created an environment where secrecy because there was so much mistreatment and kind of physical and emotional abuse that it created an environment where secrecy was tolerated because you, you want to be able to do the kind of you know immoral abusive things you're doing so you're not going to you know either tell on someone else who's doing something different or like you know a lot of the girls were saying how you know it was so difficult being at the camp, the training camps at the Carolis and it was such an uncomfortable place to be that this Larry Nasser guy was really nice to them and befriended them and ultimately, you know, would, would talk to them and not tell their secrets back to the coaches, would share, give candy to them, and then ultimately would end up molesting them in their beds. In their, in their beds. Of course, they, they always start out nice. Right, and so he's grooming them. Duh. But, you know, but this is coming out in somewhat spectacular fashion, but my two, we can't let it stop at where it's at, even though more and more people are joining it every day. It all seems to be focused around this Larry Nasser character and a few other random things. And I'm here to say basically that I think this is a much more widespread problem. I think that this is going on in, you know, I'm not going to say every gym around the country, but I'd say at least 50% of them, maybe more. Um, some of these cases and things are coming out involve gyms that I have worked at or trained at or competed at at various times in my gymnastics career involve people that i know some of whom you know i have other interesting stories about um this but even as a child i didn't have a name for it i was always intuitively aware that this was going on and have tried since i became able to speak about it in a way that i understood it to talk about it in my own way I and mean, several years back i told my dad when the original sandusky thing was going on i told my dad and he couldn't believe it he looked at me like what are you talking about like he does about everything i say I said, this is going on in gymnastics too. You watch. By the time this is all over, like it, it, you're, it's going to be a huge thing, and it isn't just going to be gymnastics. It's going to be involved every institution. This is the lever of power. This is how power works in, a, in an empire like we have here. You'll see. It'll be the, the entertainment industry, all, all sports, banking, government, everything. And he looked at me like I was nuts. And then about two years after I said that, it came out that Don Peters, who had been the 1984 Olympic coach, and also coached many other, you know, many famous gymnasts that he had basically been banned from USA Gymnastics for, you know, sexual abuse charges that I guess had, the, the statute of limitation had passed, so he wasn't really able to be 
legally punished, but he was banned from USA Gymnastics. It now comes out that he actually still has some involvement with some things. But, you know, it's, so that was the first little drip and then it slowly dripped out over. But I, as a child, intuitively understood that this was going on around me. There was always, almost every gym that I've ever been in, there's like always that kind of one weird guy. And I'm not saying that all those weird guys are pedophiles or abusive or whatever, but if it's a small child has strange intuitions, where are the parents? Where are the other coaches? What, like, how are they? Some of the people that I had those weird feelings about have turned up to be some of the people in these cases. How is it that like, there isn't a better level of disc like discretion, discernment, monitoring, questions being asked going on? And the other thing is, is that I don't think this is just happening with girls. And, and right now, the way it's being framed is it's all fr mostly framed around, you know, this Larry Nasser guy who's in jail. He's in jail, you know, for, for basically for an unrelated situation of molesting his neighbor. But also there's all these charges against him that he's going to have to face. But he's not the only one. Like we, there needs to be, and I'm just only talk, I'm mostly talking about this because this is a microcosm of the macrocosm. The system, the entire USA gymnastics system needs to be holistically cleansed. That doesn't mean that everybody has to go, but we need, there needs to be a separate, for, excuse the biblical reference, but we need to separate the wheat from the shaft. You know, the people who really had no idea this was going on, they, they, in some ways they need to be questioned too, because how could you have not noticed this? But we need to have a huge house cleaning. And I'm not talking about a top down house cleaning. And that's the direction I'm afraid this is going to go in. Like, the, uh, the head of USA Gymnastics stepped down because the U.S. Olympic Committee asked him to, you know, kind of insisted that he do. And I think there'll be more people to leave, um, you know, but then they're also, they're starting, like, they're feeling, a lot of people are feeling, they've gotten Diane Feinstein, senator from California, who's notoriously corrupt and not a good person, is pa trying to pass this bill that would basically make it you know, a, a, you have, say that you have to report anytime anyone says, one says anything about sexual abuse within a, a, a sport or a program that has to be go to law authorities right away. I don't have a problem with that. Of course. But, have, but here's the thing about, look, what Feinstein and all the rest of the politicians know is the reason why kitty sex, child trafficking, pedophilia, all of that are so powerful is because of the level of compromise it introduces yes, into a person's life. Yes. So, so each level, they yes. want they want to create another layer yes. because they sit there cravenly in Washington, D.C., shielded from any inquiry into what really yes. goes on around the Capitol, despite the fact that there are limos rolling around Capitol Hill every day yes. at lunchtime with little boys and little girls in the back for a yes. little lunchtime snack. And for nobody party. ever talks yeah. about that. Yeah, you know, and, and so my feeling, well, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, that should be, a lo obviously, it should be common sense that if someone is saying a coach molested a kid, then the authority is, if, not that we have reliable authorities, but in a world where we did, yes, of course that should happen. I feel like they're just wanting to create this. So they like to know who the, who the molesters are, who they can compromise, who the ones that aren't are that they'd like to control so they can try and get them into a situation where something happens. Like having Diane Feinstein, <laughs> act as like some kind of um, hero in this situation is completely giving the keys to the chicken coop to the fox. Um, and I, I'm concerned about that, but there does people, there are a few people out there who are really trying to not let this case go. And in fact, I'm, there's someone that I'm going to ask. Um, I drafted an email. I'm going to send it to her um, who does a gymnastics podcast. And I think she's done a very, um, good job covering this and I think she really cares and I would like to have her come on the show and talk about this and a few other things. Um, I don't know if she'll agree to that because this is completely out of her range, the kind of show we are, but I'm hoping she will. Um, but we, we can't rely, and this goes for the shit with the government and all this other stuff. It goes for the, the, the pedophilia stuff as well as all the other corruption. We can't try and vote a cure to this or, or try and have a top-down solution. This is something that we have to fix from the bottom up and at every level. We have to, we, we all have to take responsibility for it. Even if you're not a gymnast or know someone who's a gymnast or, or know someone who's been abused by a coach, you should care about this. Like, I kind of feel like this thing going on with the gymnastics, it's like a smaller version of the thing going on with the pedo gate and the government and all this kind of stuff. And if we can take this opportunity to handle this problem correctly, then we can set a model for us, an example of how we can 
you know, clear this problem in other institutions because it's everywhere. It's a huge, I mean, I think Randy's right. All these other problems that we suffer from really are almost inconsequential compared to this one because this goes right to the heart of moral and immoral behavior and the treatment of, of children and, and souls and, and, and whatnot. And this is like, you know, it's some me. things, some things never change. The mechanics of this aren't all that complicated. People have been sacrificing their children to the gods yeah. since the ancient civilizations of Mesopotamia and further, probably going back to Atlantis, yeah. Lemuria, and whatever came before that. Because we're not dealing just with a human problem, we're dealing with a with large a spirit. scale spiritual problem. It's the archons. It's right. the satanic element that demands this kind of sacrifice. Um, sacrifice of innocence, sacrifice of blood, the compromise of the living soul, because once a child is compromised like that, that in my definition well, is the murder of a soul. And also the exchange of the soul or the child for material or power. Like one well, of the that's the other... That, and one that's of the comments... The, well, sorry, one of the comments that's been made throughout this is how there's been a few people kind of filed, fired or disciplined, but that if you look at the minutes of the meetings at USA Gymnastics, the, most of the talk is still about money and medals, right? So there's this thing going on over here to the side and they deal with that only to like, as an, as an annoyance, back to the talk about money or medals. And that's kind of like, you know, we're sacrificing these kids. Some of the kids, some of these people who are, who are, um, you know, filing these complaints and saying it's happening them are Olympic medalists who have won Olympic medals, but whose lives now have been seriously um, thrown off track, destroyed, uh, you know, totally upset. They're having to, you know, they're realizing what happened. You know, we know how this works and this, this stuff that we deal with, you know, sometimes it takes until years after the things happen before you fully understand what happened to you. And then the trauma of that comes. So these mm -hmm. people who, who have, who, go ahead, I'm sorry. Who supplies the ambition in the first place to do professional class athletics at the level of children that we're talking about? Right. We're talking about, you know, six, Why seven, eight-year-old children who are basically put into a high-stakes competitive game. Yeah. They may in the beginning enjoy it, and they may continue to enjoy it, but it's not lost on me that the best sports I ever played as a kid with sandlot baseball and, and, and tag football in a field somewhere where there were no adults around and where it was the sheer joy of playing a game. And yeah, I understand. I mean, but, and then we take this to competitive level of the Olympics, which, okay, well, here we go again. There's the gods, there's the sacrifice. Right. I mean, the like whole, the it's flame. a ritual. I mean, the Olympics we're, we're, is a ritual. All ritual. The Olympics is a ritual, and I, like, I don't agree with everything he says, but one interesting thing that I heard Anthony Patch one time say is that basically the history of the Olympics and like, the purpose of the Olympics was, to, was like, almost like an MKL's operation, to find these most talented people so you could use them in the way that you want, as, uh, almost sort of as offerings to the gods. I mean, think about the, the, his, the history and the mythology that the Olympics comes from and represents. And yeah, I mean, it's to me, you know, there's, we, we can have gymnastics and competitive gymnastics and people who can do incredible things and accomplish great feats. But like, I see more, a lot more interesting things going on um, at the college gymnastics level than I really do at this high stakes elite level gymnastics. And don't think that the college gymnastics level isn't high, isn't, there isn't high stakes there as well. But this kind of, you know, there's so many kids out there whose parents, like, just give them up to the sport and to the coach for maybe the kid's dream, or maybe it's more the parent's dream, or maybe the kid's lost and confused throughout the process, and maybe their kid even makes it to the Olympic and wins a medal, but then maybe they're 30, they find themselves 35 years old crying on 60 minutes because they now, you know, have realized and are having to deal with the fact that there was a man molesting them in their bed at the training camp where they became this thing that they're famous for. And how, I mean, I, you know, one of the girls, Janet Antlin, was just said, she said, not, not besides everything else, it's also just totally embarrassing. You know what I mean? So, like, I can't, this whole thing of, like, you know, the, the things that are being sacrificed 
for this thing that like, like, let's be honest, like the, in the scope of what's important in life, the Olympics don't really, they don't matter. It's, they don't matter. Why, you know, and so look at how many, how much harm and damage is being done for something, you know, and, and, and being swept under the rug because we can't destroy the drive towards or the image of what it's going to look like when we get to this place for this thing that doesn't ultimately even really matter. You know what I mean? It goes into the whole thing about most people who know me know I'm not a fan of professional sports. Uh, I think most of that is simply based on money and power and bragging rights. And yeah. there's always an occult aspect to all of it. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether it's the gridiron or the baseball diamond, which just looks like a big Masonic square right. and triangle. Yeah. You know, we're well, and they always, even have rituals they practice during the game, like they, they, around the whole. Yeah, it's all ritual, and it, yeah. Here's the thing. I think there's a healthy level to engaging in physical things, including baseball. I, I love baseball, but we're now at the place where we're so transfixed on the physic physicality of everything. Yeah, and everything has such high stakes i mean even something simple like a poker game is now texas hold'em all the time because people can't sit down and play cards the way they used to right which used to actually be be a form be of recreation. Fun. yeah yeah. Um, yeah i mean we're transfixed still on this this acquisition cycle this cycle of ego the cycle of things that are dominated by money and power and hierarchical structures. There's got to be a winner. There's got to be a loser. Oh, well, that's fine in a limited parameter. But we're talking about the rearview window to the world in terms of, of the things we're discussing, and specifically in the sports world, because so many people are caught in that, that world's spin cycle all the time. Yeah. You know, it's all yeah. sports all the time. Yeah, you know. Like, Awesome. It's, in a, it's a yeah. way of understanding both what can be good about us because there is that, you know, there's that classic ABC wide world of sports thing. The, the agony, thrill of victory the and the agony of defeat. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and yeah. they got the guy skiing off the mountain, you know. But, yeah. And there was I, all of that. It's Jim Ryan breaking the, you know, the, 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 five, the four minute, five minute mile. It's. It, not Comanese scoring a 10, and they didn't have a scoreboard I that could match that, just, so they put a one. I yeah. was just going to bring Nadia Comanese up, yeah. yes. It's, you know, it's, it's the, the incredible synchronicity of someone named Usain Bolt being it's the fastest that man That moment when they tell you, we didn't have perfect until just now, and you just scored yeah. perfect. Yeah. I you mean, know, and, how do you, that is the triumph of the human spirit, and you want to celebrate that. Sure. Yeah, you know, and, and especially, I mean, people overcoming hardship and injury and you see a lot of that. I love gym. I just, I'm sure that our listeners at this point are very clear on the fact that I love gymnastics. Like in my life, there's been really like three things that I love and care about. And it's, you know, I love, I love gymnastics. I love music and I love this quest for the truth, my truth, whatever our, tr our truth is. Like th these are the things I'm passionate and care about. And so I'm only talking about this because, because, because I care so much and, and, you know, and because there's a lot of people wrapped into a system. Um, and I think there's a better way we can be doing this. There's a more holistic way that we can be, um, be fantastic and be amazing and accomplish things, but also take care of each other while we're doing it and not let, you know, sh the sheer like, money and power and accomplishment dictate the right thing to do and 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 making sure that someone is not just okay enough okay so they can accomplish their goal but okay so that they can live you know a happy healthy life um you know and not not have traded that in for one moment of of accomplishment um and so yeah so thank you for kind of indulging me in this conversation about this randy um passionate about it hopefully I'll be able to get this girl on to talk a little bit about this. Um, and thank you all for, for uh, listening. But if you guys, it's pretty easy to find information on it. If you just look up USA Gymnastics Sex Scandal, 
Um, there is also, Randy was talking about Penn State. There's been a scandal going on at Penn State or the entire team basically. Um, and it's, you know, there's something, this much stuff going on at Penn State, there's something not right at Penn State. I competed to meet there one oh, time. There's, all there's, kinds of, uh, yeah. there's just, the, the place is creepy. It's like the fucking creepy is, hollow. It's like creepy hollow. It is creepy uh, hollow. It's very yeah. much that. Um, it's a very cloistered community. They call it Happy Valley. It's not. Yeah. They, right? It's, it's, always, it's always that. Um, it's always all that. All kinds of horrible things have happened there. Yeah. A lot of which has been silenced because, again, this is a community. If you close U.S. Route 322 going into State College, you're you in a fish totally bowl. Lock it off. You're in a fishbowl yeah. there. I mean, you can go over top the mountain passes. Yeah. You can traverse, you know, refurbish cow paths if you want to get out of town. But I'm talking about isolation at a level that yeah. was by you design. Can, yeah, you can feel the the weird energy and vibration there for sure yeah i i I was there when i was 19 years old and didn't have the level of was 18 or 19 level of um knowledge or intuition and discernment that i have now and i could feel it um this thing with the gymnastics team basically the entire gymnastics team walked out saying that that because of claiming abusive practices i'm not 100 percent clear on whether they were just these were just like physical and emotional abusive practices or if they involved sexual abuse practices but they so that happened and one of the coaches stepped down and then finally the head coach was fired um and immediately so now then immediately with no coach they go back and were performing their team total of their first meet back was about four points higher than it had been before so just you know maybe they were having a mutiny and not performing well on purpose but or maybe just once you've been freed from that kind of abuse and oppression you can actually even be better than you know than what you were doing before um but it, it this has been going on for months and months and longer at Penn State and it took that long it took the entire team basically walking out so almost a loss of program for the university to make a change and i think only came from because of pressure from outside so there's something seriously wrong going on at Penn State, and we've all known that for a long time, but it isn't just football. It isn't just no. It isn't just football, and, and this isn't just about Penn State. This is connected to every other. It, this is connected to the, the pedo gate and the government stuff and all of this uh, larger thing in USA gymnastics. There is no just isolation chamber for any of this. And I don't want to wash things. I don't want to wash things with broad strokes because there are college towns, and there's a lot of them here, and, and a lot of them are kind of isolated because. The state university system was kind of set up to put colleges and universities in places where they were somewhat sequestered anyway. But the palpable difference with Penn State is there's something else going on that's very dark. Yes, you can feel it. It is a spiritual stronghold as well as it's a political stronghold. It is a base of power. There are projects conducted there, secret government projects conducted there. There's massive amounts of research money dumped into it, corporate money. It's a corporate power structure. I mean, the joke here where I live is that when you see a Penn State bumper sticker, you might as well just say asshole on on the the bumper sticker instead. And that is painting things with a broad stroke because there are good people, again. But categorically we are now beginning to see where there are strongholds of evil. And those are the places that I think spiritual warriors need to step into. We're starting to see it rise up now with Petergate because there's enough, there's enough, I hate the word victim, but survivors out there now that have kind of matured into the consciousness level that we're talking about on this show and they're not just activists on the physical level they're activists in terms of spiritually going after what empowers all this yeah i mean when the seat of a peter gate itself is actually vatican square under which they've done ritual (laughs) child sacrifice right sacrifice then you understand the order that this this all holds over the world in terms of wherever you have a power structure, you also have an underlying system of child trafficking, pedophilia, and sexual abuse. 
It's ever because it's, it, it, yeah. it's, it's currency. There is nothing more precious than that. You, it's you ha- it's you how power is. Money. It's how power it's, is bought and sold. It is how, how you how control power people. Is denominated. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the most powerful people in the world don't care about money other than the fact that they know that's how they can get other, their greedy little minion people to do their dirty work. Like most powerful people in the world operate with the currency of it's, sex trafficking, drug trafficking, pedophilia, which is about gaining not only actual physical power over somebody, but spiritual power over them. It's vampirism. To, it is vampirism. absolutely, it's spiritual vampirism. Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, that is one of the things that's wrong, and it's one of the things we want to be over. We, you know, we want to look yeah. for today. And quite honestly, it means that a lot of people need to do a lot of prison time. Some of them, frankly, need to be, let's just say, escorted out of the present space-time dimension unceremoniously <laughs> because they don't belong here. Right. And we need to begin to locate and isolate those entities because if you're only looking at the natural right now you're not seeing the whole story there's a reason why it's a ritual system and why it's a system of sacrifice because human beings have still continued to give their power up to vampiric entities that they think are quote gods yeah yeah well yeah yes well, and, and whether those, well, yeah absolutely Wow. So, well, that was, I didn't know we were going to go there with that. That was, that that was, was heavy. A, but it was, was it is heavy. It, know, is, it, it, it is heavy and it needs to be, it needs to be talked about. And you know, that is, if I have to say, like, if, let's just, if, if there's one thing that we absolutely must fix before we are able to really move into a space where we are just completely empowered reality generators and creators and whatever, it's, it's that we, that, you know, like, I'm all for all kinds of uh, freedom and I don't like government and I don't like control and all that kind of stuff. But the one thing that absolutely cannot be permitted in, in if we're going to create something better than this is th- you know, that kind of, well, it is the same people that have suppressed free energy sure, lied course. to us about government black projects right. operated the military industrial intelligence complex for their own personal profit, exploiting, people all over the planet but, but the way they've done all of that is through is use of sexual black pedophilia. yeah so, so that, uh, this is the base level of taking down the cabal on the planet yeah uh, yeah absolutely and so you know this is i mean i guess this is this is the, if this is where we have to direct a lot of our if we're still looking into information and still you know trying to fix something that is broken here this this is the one to do because if we can fix this one then all the other bullshit and corruption and 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 cover-ups and stuff like that those those all come crashing down too yep you know and i want to do i'd I'd much rather talk about metaphysics i'd love to talk about you know time tripping and and dimensional overdrive and uh yeah this matrix construct and and all the things behind that but we got to get this out of the way first and then we can do the interstellar overdrive thing because we'll have cleansed our our our, our collective energy. Yeah. You know, this yeah, dark know. energy yeah. that's just just sucking away at us right now. I mean, I, I, you know, actually, Randy, I'm so glad we ended up doing this show, guys. I wasn't sure if we were, if I even wanted to do anything tonight. I've been having a very rough couple of days going back and forth between being overly having some emotional stuff and then having this, I just don't give a fuck about anything kind of thing, but that's it. You know, and maybe I'm having that sort of um, battle within myself. We need to do a serious spiritual cleansing and then we can, you know, move forward and create. And that doesn't mean we have to wait till everything is cleansed to start moving forward and creating, but you know, that's, that's where the, the push and the pull is, you know what I mean? Like that is, um, that's it. Like there, you know, these things have to be, these things have to be dealt with. We can't just go, Oh, well that's a yucky subject. So let's just try moving on without it. It isn't going to work without, you know, without dealing with it. Well, we all don't have much in common, but we were all children once. And for a lot of us, that was a real painful thing too. Yeah. And so just by reason of understanding that we have to 
we have to deal with this as a society and a culture. And there, there, there's got to be zero tolerance for this. There's simply, you can't just let somebody like Dianne Feinstein walk in and make up some more arbitrary rules about this. Yeah. The simple answer is it's zero tolerance. And we have to empower the, the, the children to speak up. We have to create safe environments, not hostile workplaces. And we have to become vigilant about the spiritual powers behind us, which is what everybody's missing. Yeah. You know, most people don't make the connection between the Vatican and Penn State, but it's there. Yeah. It, it, you, don't even have to, you don't even have to dig very deep to find I mean, it's it. a Roman Catholic diocese. Yeah. And, and they sat silent while their priests were doing this, and they've sat silent while their parishioners have done it being sanctioned wasn't Why? that wasn't the football so, yeah. camp wasn't the football camp sort of a religious a catholic kind of sponsored kind of camp football, football camp. At, that jet at penn state that was where the jerry sandusky thing started to come apart no wasn't, it wasn't it wasn't religiously sanctioned at all okay most of the major players were roman catholics I okay mean, i'm sorry you know if you're still catholic out there <laughs> You need to get rid of that too, but I mean, I, I tell the same thing for anybody that's got a religion right now, because again, all yep. the religions were set up to worship false gods. Sorry, sorry, yep, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, again, spirit, religion, and spirituality are two completely different things, and we're yeah. not, you know, there's some good ideals and morals and thoughts interwoven in some of these religions but the way that they're being um preached and and executed and whatever is not um it doesn't add up it's not in line it's you know what i mean all, it's the, not, religions, all the religions are ancient mystery re religions nothing's changed yeah. in eight or eight, eight to ten thousand years and some of them aren't even very mysterious so they're <laughs> no, they aren't even very mysterious they're just <laughs> right yeah. There is, yeah, some of them, some of them, like you can just see through the nonsense. Like there isn't even some great mystery to it. It's like this is just bullshit. This is just mind control. This is, and the the government tops that list of bullshit religions. <laughs> um, there was one and, more thing. No, I, I don't know where else you wanted to go. We got kind of deep and heavy on yeah. gate, and I think that was a good thing to do. Yeah. Uh, there was one other thing. Um, I watched a movie trailer today, and I don't know how I missed this. It's a movie called The Thinning, mm. and it is along the same lines of what we've just been talking about. This movie was made, I think, last year. It looks like it's running on YouTube Red, which is, mm. I guess, YouTube's kind of answer to Amazon and Netflix. No, YouTube Red is where you pay for them to unbreak all the shit that they've broken okay. since back when yeah. they used to be a reasonable service. Thanks, yes. thanks YouTube. Whatever. <laughs> So there's this movie, and, and it's basically about how um, Earth has hit this critical point, resources are getting scarce, and they decide they, make the, they have to make the horrible sacrifice of thinning, hence the title, right. the human race. And the way they do this is they have to now decide which of their children are going to be allowed to live. So they begin taking the best and the brightest and testing them to call from the top tiers of academics and sports and everything. Mm -hmm. you know where this is going. Yeah. This is this is highly selective eugenics coupled with genocide. Yeah. Oh, so it's eugenicide basically. Eugenicide. And yeah. they, you know, it's a it's a it, it looks like a, a one of those horror movies on one level. Mm -hmm. On the other, it contemplates something that's intolerable that we would have to ever make that choice that we live in a world of limited resources that man somehow has fouled this planet i mean this planet has been fouled but not by the average person on the street yeah. you breathing and driving your car and doing the things that you do in the course of a day are not what fouled this planet it was the military industrial complex it's the bastards that are spraying chemtrails spraying nuclear reactors and all kinds of... Um, well, we have interference, right? When you're talking about the bastards, now we have interference. Imagine that. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> so yeah, no, the, the, the point of this movie, The Thinning, is to get us to a place where we're willing to make the horrible choice of agreeing 
that only the very best and the very brightest, the creme de la creme of our generation will live and the rest of the kids have to be called and executed. Well, and who deci- and, and then who decides who's the best and the brightest? Who, brightest? who decides what qualities are the ones that make somebody the creme de la creme, well, right? What, what creeped yeah. me out? Okay, so here's what creeped me out about it. It shows these kids going into a, a classroom, into a testing room, and the pressure behind this <laughs> testing and how this testing gets increasingly more selective and selective. Does it sound familiar to anybody out there? I can't, you know, I can't imagine anything like that ever occurring. Oh, I mean, gee, we're not just not talking me. about... Certainly not to me. <laughs> no, we're not just talking about some dystopian future. We're, we're yeah. talking about what they've actually been doing for the last yeah. 60 years anyway. Yeah. They yeah. just don't sacrifice the children quite that way. So, but they, in some ways, they sort of put do. Them, you put them, yeah. in, you put them in, in a little program. Yeah. And, you know, you, know, you, 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 you figure out what what makes their clock tick, and then you split that, and then you split it again, and pretty soon, well, you have the other side of child sacrifice, the yeah. violation of the soul from the psyche. So, then, you know, it really is a dark world, and the mind control on the level of a movie like The Thinning is unacceptable. You know, if, if you watch the trailer, I'll put the link up, watch the trailer, don't rent the movie, don't watch it, don't give these people headspace. Yeah for this propaganda, because that's what this is. This is and simply- people, people, people will go watch it and they'll think it's make-believe. The so then black- when they hear someone, then when they hear someone, people like us talking about this as a real thing, they'll say, no, it's not, that's fake stuff. We saw a movie about it. You're making it up, whatever. You just heard and saw the movie, yeah. See, the amazing thing about entertainment is it creates- Entertainment? Space. It creates a space for you to accept the idea that you would never accept otherwise. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it gets you nice and relaxed. They yep. put you into an alpha state. They show you very attractive people in common situations with a lot of drama. And they slip in the message, which is, gee, we might someday actually have to do this. We may actually have to selectively genocide our own children to survive as a but race. You know what? By the insertion of these really famous, idolized, sexy looking people, they're making the concept not only seem acceptable, but sexy, glamorous, so that when it comes, people will be like, yeah, this is this yeah, fucking... Yeah. The way Hollywood works is, and it goes back to the slasher movies that were popular starting in the 70s, you know, which were like the shows, you know, the movies that we would go see his kids like Halloween, the Jamie Lee Curtis movies. And then, you know, all of the creepy movies that came later, Freddie movies and the, yeah. uh, Jason know, and all that. Jason. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's a level of titillation to that, that blends violence and adrenaline and sex into kind of this heady brew that again, mm-hmm. slips stream something into you. Those yeah. movies were gateways for MK Ultra projects that yeah. gave us what ultimately became uh, Columbine and all yeah. of these other yeah. shooter movies, which those movies were simply aligned with what the projects were producing at that point in time. Yeah, very, yeah. They transitioned somewhat, at least in specialized projects, from the Manchurian Candidate, MK Ultra Classic type of thing, into right. these explosive. Uh, adolescent, early adult personalities that with splintered minds that could go out and perform a very selective type of violence on a scale that was mass trauma. Yeah. Which is always the other point to all of this. I mean, that's what 9-11 was at its core. It was a mass trauma event that was designed to trigger stimulus and response across the entire world. It was the, literally a day that things changed and it was high drama. These movies do it in sequential ways that track with agency projects. I, yeah. Again, you know, we're right back to the same thing. The exploitation of everything that should be good about us is perverted and turned inside out. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So one more thing, kind of unrelated to that, but something I just want to ask maybe some of you guys to do, something that I did a few weeks ago. Some, for some reason, I just, I don't know where the thought the idea came from. I decided I had never looked up the gematria of my name. And for some reason, something told me to go look up the gematria of my name. 
So I went to the website called Gematrix, and I looked up the gematria of my name, and the number is somewhat beside the point. The more fascinating thing to see was the extensive list below that of other things that have the same gematria of my name, and it was quite fascinating, um, uh, disturbing, enlightening, um, I, like uh, kind of flabbergasting. So um, I would be interested if some of you guys want to do that and then send, us, send me a message or comment to us um, about if you have hey, sort of Are you going to give us an example here? Come on, Emily, share with sure. the class a little sure. bit. Sure, hold, hold, okay. Randy, you do your solo for a few seconds and I'll be right back, okay? You, uh, you do your solo. I, I, I kind of uh, I kind of jiggle her cage door there on that so that she'll give us a little bit more information. Anyway, this is kind of a break. So I will blank the camera at this point. Sorry, hold on, I had to, okay. I went to go get my okay. phone so I could. Uh, read you guys this list. Hold on. Okay. Just a second, guys. <laughs> okay. So, the gematria of my name, well, th there's a couple different kinds of gematria that it calculates for you. So, it, uh, the, the, the Jewish gematria of my name, which is, uh, is 1029, and the English gematria of my name is 840, and the simple, English, the simple gematria of my name is 140. So in the first list, which is by Jewish gematria, so other things that have the gematria of 1029, and I'll give you the, some of the most interesting or disturbing or bizarre ones, and, or some of the ones that I think were interesting that they relate to me, considering some of the things I'm interested in, some of the things I've talked about, some of the places I've been and done. So the first one, just because it's funny, we'll say this one, is ejaculation. Um, um, okay. All right, that was good. Right? Um, so uh, this, is, this one is really disturbing. Child molester's mouthpiece. Um, let's see. Corrupt senators. Hateful insanity. Clouds in the sky. This one's funny. Deceives Oprah. <laughs> Um, discover card, their houses shall be spoiled, martyr of the children, lava tube, blood stains on my hand. No. Super terrorist. This is creepy. Yeah. Um, hold on. He is awake. Austin is ready. Damage reversal. New York be corrupted, or, or NY be corrupted, has a lengthy rap sheet, the maker of evil, the unified theory, the giving light, ye shall be holy, the gods are scared of Austin, <clears throat> the formula of the soul, Mr. Obama is guilty. Fiscal transparency. Wait a minute. That's in there? Mr. Obama is guilty? That's in yep. the, the, the Gematrix? Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Wow. Um, I'm not done yet. So, um, elusive. Standardization. Immune system. So, some of those are things, like, you know, some of them were funny. Some of them were disturbing. Some were... Uh, true, some were bizarre, correlate to me. So here, let's move on to the next one, which is the, um, the next is the, the, uh, the English gematria. So, uh, so other things that have the English gematria, same as my name, um, Prometheus, Revelations, Pittsburgh, which I, there, I have a funny thing with Pittsburgh, you know, that I spend a lot of time there at a certain period of my life. Um, Infinite Love, Jack the Ripper, Hocus Pocus, Spoken Word, Love is the all. Um, hermaphrodite. Um, 
I love Christ. Keepy uppy. I don't know what the fuck that means, but I thought it was funny. In two minds. Poopy diaper. Um, the Holy Grail. Observation. Clairvoyant. Vision of Pan. Satan the Devil. Uh, my dad's gematria. Don't hesitate. Andy Murray. Isn't that fascinating, Andy? Uh, uh, Randy? Um, Interesting, because you talk about Andy Murray a lot. Yeah. Carbon 12. Do you believe hoax planet X? Interesting. Evil nations roar like a lion, knock on wood, eat, pray, love, heal with love. Gematria saves just in time. Uh, war on drugs, which is interesting, especially because that's how I got into all of this space. This information was, was really when I realized there was something funny with the war on drugs. Um, let's see. Uh, Barack Obama revealed. I think it's funny that this Barack Obama thing keeps coming up. <clears throat> um, uh, let's see. Hold on. What else is there? Uh, child pervert. Boogie Street. Absolute lies anywhere else. And then there's, um, there's another one that's simple, simple English gematria, but I think you guys get the point here. So I like the number of things, and I just read some of the ones that I thought were the most interesting or pertinent. There's a lot of others as well. But if you guys recall back to our guest, Zachary Hubbard, and we were talking with him about this sort of gematria being a code, the fact that like there's, I mean, just so many things, like just that's weird that there was like two, those things about Austin in there. The thing, I mean, there was a, a number of those things are related to things that I talk about, places I've been, things that have happened to me, things that are important. It's very weird. Like, is there, is this like a natural, like universal coding kind of thing? Or is this code, is this, how, how much does Gematria part of our program? Oh, I just ran this and I just ran my name in this. Yeah. There's a lot of free association involved, but I got to tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird, right? Uh, you know, it is. It's, we're not really dealing with precise science, but I was the, the, I'm looking at this. Um, Babylon, mm -hmm. num numerological honeybee, that's Masonic. That's interesting. Donut addict. I don't know where that came from. Uh, but it gets a little more interesting. You're really a cop, Andy. You're just not telling us. You're a donut addict, huh? Yeah, Philadelphia, <laughs> Philadelphia Marathon, mm -hmm. leader of the rebellion, the, yep. notes, the notes of God, moon ghosts, mm -hmm. actor Sean Penn, which is weird because, you know, I've, I admit, I, I've always kind of liked Sean. I love Penn. Sean Penn, yeah, even though he says um, some really weird shit. He I says some yeah. ridiculous things, but you got to remember. Ridiculous. You know, he's still trying to break his programming, too. Yeah. Mark of the Ophidian Child. I don't know what that is. Um, I have, there's a lot of weird ones like that in mine, too, that I don't know what they mean, mean so I didn't say them. But there's a lot of weird ones like that in mine. Well, maybe well. somebody out there, or I'll find out later what exactly yeah. that means. Um, a, and maybe we should look up some of these ones that we don't know what they mean, because maybe they're even more important than the ones we do understand. The Elenin secret. Remember Elenin? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Remember a lot of this. Richard Hoagland. Remember Richard Hoagland with the planet Elenin? <laughs> what what <laughs> I think is interesting is a lot of it is rooted in stuff that I've either talked about, yes. studied a lot. Yeah, that's so, what I'm saying. You know, there is something to it. Like I said, we're There's kind of free associating, it. but that's yeah. not necessarily a bad thing because a lot of divination is actually what? You, you, you basically in divination, you're using a seemingly random process to pull things out of the ether. This is self knowledge. Yes. This is why you do tarot. It's why you do yes. dowsing. Um, yes, but also rooms. Also, all yes. of those things are divination mediums. Here's the thing. Here's the. Okay, so this was my thought, and I, I maybe I told you this. I've gone back and forth on the whole channeling thing. You know. Mm -hmm. And Danny McKinney just had a guy on her show. Stan, the data collector? Stan, Stan the data collector. I haven't listened, and, but I saw that. I thought it was cute. I thought it was amusing. 
There's some things there I kind of agreed with. Here's the thing. If you go back, I go back to Seth. Because for me, and I know you haven't read Seth yet. I'm going to. Yeah. Seth material, it was the mother load. It was the unpackaging of everything that was supposed to be revealed in this present time about our consciousness, our, our, our place within the space-time fabric, our psychology, our physiology. The multidimensional thing is huge in the Seth material. And there's stuff in the Seth material that I've gone back and read over the years that I'm only now beginning once again to pull it out. Because I go back and read Seth at least once or twice a year. It's just, it's kind of how I refresh myself. So all of this channeling stuff, all of this, whatever you call it. And I come, I, I'm sitting thinking one day, what is it we're looking for? Why all these voices? I mean, you've got Barbara Morciniak with the, with the Pleiadians. Um, obviously, you know, we went through the ion thing. We've gone through numerous galactic councils where they're channeling everybody from Jesus to the Archangel Michael. Is this lunacy? And, and you know, some, yeah. of, it, some <laughs> of it needs to be rejected. Some of it is just so yeah. patently bad. And it is another vessel for these archons to come in. So we got to be careful about that. But the thought came to me one day that what we're really doing in our best intentionality, we're channeling ourselves. We yeah, are essentially reaching into the fabric of the collective unconscious and, and pulling this out. And because we don't have very much faith in ourselves, to be able to say, I channeled that from me. We're, we're connecting with our highest future, most realized yeah, self. And yeah. trying, and I, uh, somebody had an interesting post, maybe it was August week, about we need to start trying to communicate. Instead of just getting information this way, we need to start communicating information to that highest self. And I thought that was a, a good point and interesting. Well, yeah. It is part of the, uh, the multidimensional aspect, and that's something we can yeah. go into, because this is the kind of stuff I want to talk about. But it, yeah. it, it yeah, occurred that's to I, me yeah. that, that we're trying to connect with this current that flows through us, with these dimensions that are bumping up around us all the time, and we get these bleed-throughs, and we get downloads, you know, and you've seen me, I, I get a download, it's like, you know, I need to hit it right then in order to be able to get it down, because it's like, poof, and it's gone again. I need, to start, like I need to start doing that too, because I think I have it, and then I lose it, I really need to start becoming much more disciplined with how I record information. Yeah, and, and for everybody out there, you all get this, whether you know it or not, you have bleed-throughs, you have downloads, you have moments when you have profound insights and you ignore them because you've been trained to ignore them because you yep. go, that's crazy, that's, that's insane. That's silly, whatever. Yeah. Collectively, humanity has such a low self-esteem that we've had to have gods and pantheons of gods yeah. and archons and angels and demons. It can't just be us. All of these yeah. have in some way come into our gestalt as a symbolism for the part of us that we can't embrace, which is the part of us that actually has access to all things, access yeah. to all dimensions, all times, all levels, all aspects of ourselves, past, present, and future, interacting with each other in time stream matrices that bend and blend and arc over and loop and do all kinds of crazy shit. And we yeah. just, as a, as a race, we have very low, low self-esteem right now. Yeah. We, and that's something we need to work on and build. I just wanted to, back to the Demetria, Demetria thing for a second. Do you think, because we know, uh, you know, it, it, that they, these secret societies and people who run projects and programs use things like Demetria to code things. I'm just wondering if that has any, any relationship or correlation or impact on, our pro, on programming for individuals, on how we're programmed, on things that are triggers, on... I mean, the, lump, the number of yeah. things that, so I just think that's maybe, this maybe is a topic for us to look a little further to, into, into the future. Um, but I would be interested if any of you guys want to run the gematria of your names and share what kind of interesting results you have. Um, maybe we'll do a future show on this, uh, dive into this deeper, because I just found, found that fascinating. Yeah. That website is gematrix.org, G-E-M-M-A. 
G-E-M-A-T-R-I-X, gematrix.org. And, and then the other thing that I asked people before, to, like if they wanted to look up their, um, the, the 13 moons thing and see what their, gala- let me find the galactic uh, code or what their kind of grouping was. Let me see if I can find which. Uh, it's, so the website where I found that, if you go to, if you go to, um, hold on, it's the one right before that. Ah, shit. So if you go to um, 13moon.com and then look up and then go to the se- section called Your Galactic Signature, I'd also be interested to know if people find that those th- they, that whatever they oh, yeah, come up with. That web page right up here. It's yeah. the number 13moons.com. Yeah. And then go to the, the section that's, uh, where you can find out what your galactic signature is. I'm just interested to see if, if people find theirs as interesting and, and relevant to, as I found mine. So um, I, we'd love to hear from you guys yeah, on, yeah, we on would. these things. In fact, yeah. we're getting ready to wrap this thing up here. So yeah. there's your homework assignment. Now there's yeah. two set websites. Look your name up and go over to 13 Moons and check that out and then um, interact with us. Yeah, I think that that is one thing that I want to do a little more of going forward is I've had the, it's been really cool um, to interact with some of you guys, just some of you on Messenger, messenger and some I've even spoken to on Skype or on the phone. Um, I enjoy that. I know there's probably some people who I pers- has pr- promised responses to and haven't. Um, I was sick for a couple of weeks and then things got very crazy and I just kind of lost control of, of my, of that kind of stuff. So if, if, if people out there who uh, have contacted me and I said I would respond and I haven't, please, please contact me again because I really do enjoy uh, interacting with you guys. And um, maybe we'll do a little bit more of this kind of interactive stuff. In yeah, the future. That's we'll a better excuse than I have. I just suck at it. So <laughs> all right, if, guys. if I'd blown you off, you know, um, that wasn't intentional. You've got a lot of company out there. Hey, keep in contact <laughs> with us. Um, you, you, you don't really have to have an inferiority complex. Um, you really can channel yourself and you really can know just about anything you want to know because the truth is out there and it's inside you. We'll be back with another show real soon. This has been Off Planet Radio. Thanks, guys. Good night. Record.